We, um, we, we have a problem here in Western New York, um, as, a, as, as a, we, we do across the country, with, uh, with dog fighting. And you know, the, the, these cases are, are very difficult to prove because they're so clandestine and, and secret. They are, are conducted underground. Uh, a lot of times, uh, only the, the referee of the dog fighting uh, knows lo the, the location of the dog fight. The participants will, they will meet at a off-site location that the referee has designated, and then the referee will then take them to the place to have the dog fight. So this is a very uh, underground, clandestine operation that is uh, not only despicable, but uh, inhumane to, uh, to, to animals. And fortunately, through the great work of the SPCA here, we have, um, believe, broken up a dog fighting ring. The, for, for, for the public that doesn't know, the, the SPCA has law enforcement peace officers who work for the SPCA. They have the ability to um, prepare search warrants, they have the ability to execute search warrants, and they have the ability to investigate uh, crimes of dog fighting. They, they also have the ability, if, if, they had the, uh, if they had the proper equipment, to, uh, to make arrests. Um, right now, they don't have the proper equipment. That's maybe something that I'm going to look into to help, help them get, perhaps, in the future. But they can issue appearance ticket, uh, tickets uh, once they have uh, um, investigated a situation and now want to bring it to court. And that's what happened here. Uh, we had a, the SBCA uh, got a tip about a individual and a, and a dog fighting uh, uh, operation that was going on. The SBCA uh, did an investigation of this. The uh, SBCA um, uh, put in for a search warrant. The search warrant was executed uh, in March. And as a result of the search warrant, uh, they uncovered uh, seven dogs, uh, one puppy with various degrees of injury and scarring, and they recovered numerous uh, dog fighting paraphernalia, which was uh, obviously all confiscated. The dogs were taken initially to the SBCA to be treated, and then they are now in an undisclosed location for further treatment. So, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Mack today, Joshua Mack, uh, was arraigned. He was arraigned on four felony counts and on four misdemeanor counts. There were uh, three dogs that we were able to identify as being specifically part of this dog fighting ring. So there's a felony count for each dog and also a misdemeanor count for each dog. And there's also a felony count for the paraphernalia and a misdemeanor count for the paraphernalia as well. And I want, just want to thank the SBCA. I'm joined here uh, by uh, uh, Gina Browning uh, from the SBCA. Uh, I want to thank them for all they do uh, to keep uh, uh, the animals safe uh, in this community and for bringing individuals who mistreat animals to justice. Gina, thank you very much. Go ahead. Say a few words. Yeah, before I get into some of the nuts and bolts on this case, I just want to remind this community of how blessed they are to reside in a county that has a DA's office that takes animal cruelty so seriously that we had Aaron who's heading up an animal cruelty unit and it's a, something that's rare it's something that every time we share it at a conference or if we're talking to colleagues in different part of the the country they're shocked that we actually are backed up by uh, by the DA's office in our in our community so we're very fortunate to have that we're fortunate that animal cruelty is taken so seriously in Erie County uh, back in the early 90s I remember hearing over and over and over again from our law enforcement officers that we're in this alone. And every case that we brought to court was dismissed or, or not treated seriously. And now we are so fortunate to live in a community where animal cruelty is taken seriously by all parties. Uh, it takes an entire community to move forward. The fact that we were even able to press any felony charges whatsoever in an animal cruelty case and the fact that this entire community came together to make this happen is a proof that we're moving in the right direction and we're taking steps in the right direction. So thank you so much to Aaron and to D.A. Flynn for making sure that this happened. I would like to introduce our animal cruelty investigator and New York State Peace Officer, Bill Hine. Uh, Courtney Wichlack is our intern. Today's her last day and what a last day she's experiencing. <laughs> 
So we're going to get her back at some point. She doesn't know what she knows it now. <laughs> so we're going to go find her. But uh, these are the, the people who made this happen in addition to uh, some other agencies in our community. Thank you. And as, as, as Gina mentioned, uh, uh, Aaron Hart uh, from my office here uh, is the head of my animal cruelty unit. Um, we, uh, as Gina said, we, we take these cases very seriously. Um, we just prosecuted uh, uh, someone um, uh, last week uh, where, where he was uh, sentenced for uh, 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 stabbing a dog. Um, we have, uh, you know, we, we've only, you know, in the past five years, uh, you know, Officer Haney was telling me, you know, in the past five years, we've been able to uh, prosecute two dog riding, uh, dog fighting rings operations. This is a third. We know there's more out there. And um, we know that uh, this crime is, is, is prevalent here in, in the city of Buffalo, and we're going to do everything we can to, uh, to stop it. Any questions? Can you describe <clears throat> what dog fighting paraphernalia is? Uh, I, I won't. Um, I don't want to specifically talk about the evidence in this case, but in general, uh, dog, dog fighting paraphernalia um, uh, involves scales. Um, these dog fighting operations um, are like boxing, and they the dogs um, uh, agree to you know the, the participants agree amongst themselves that the dogs are gonna be a certain weight, and the dogs will only fight against other dogs within that weight class. Um, so it's just like boxing in that sense, where they where these people have uh, have set weights established for the dogs. And so they use scales, obviously, to, uh, to weigh the dogs. Uh, you, you see that in these cases. Uh, you see treadmills in these cases. The dogs um, are trained. They are put on treadmills. They are chained on treadmills. And they basically run on the treadmills to get in shape. Uh, again, just, you know, just like you and I would at a gym. Um, they, uh, so treadmills are an example of dog paraphernalia, uh, chains, uh, scales. Uh, so in general, that's what we see in dog paraphernalia cases. Uh, again, I'm not saying that we had that in this case. I'm not commenting on ev any evidence in this case at all. But in general, that's the answer to your question. They fight to the death every time. Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they can they can call a fight um, if they want. You know, if a dog is uh, uh, if, if someone can, can step in and say, "Hey, no more," and you uh, you, you won, uh, I'm done. That could happen too. Or sometimes they they go to the death. Could the landlord or What's that? What happens to the dog? that one question. Uh, yeah, you know, I yeah. just I want to just add on to yeah. what the DA said, what you just asked. When, when we're talking about dog fighting, um, I something that I, I hear is what exactly is dog fighting and what does it look like? And I do want to point out the viciousness and the horror of this and how barbaric it is. This isn't a scuffle at the dog park with one dog who's annoyed by another dog. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about dogs who are trained in many cases to kill. They're trained to bite a certain way. They're trained to attack a certain way. They are taught to do this by using other animals as bait. So we're talking about something that really is vicious. And yes, many times it is to the death because that's when you win. So what was one of the questions? Could the landlord or homeowner be charged also with uh, like running like a dog fighting ring out of the, out of the Yes, house? absolutely. A absolutely. Uh, they, if they have knowledge of the uh, uh, of the situation and they were they were a, a participant, um, we'd have to show obviously that they knew what was going on, but they can definitely be charged. Yeah, um, Maki, what's your question? Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry. It's Twila. Oh, Twila. I'm sorry. Yeah, what yeah. happens to the dogs? When oh they yeah, yeah. 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 Having the dogs. Rescued? In general, it depends. You know, we had one school of thought up until the Michael Vick situation happened and there were a lot of dogs that even uh, some very well-known animal welfare organizations were coming out saying once a dog is trained to fight or once a dog is surrounded by this kind of training, they, they just should be euthanized. They can never be good family pets. There was a doctor who worked on that case who was actually from Buffalo who was with the ASPCA in New York City at the time. And uh, he classified the dogs in three different levels, and some of them were actually rehabbed. When that all happened many years ago, a lot of the animal welfare agencies, like the SPCA serving Erie County, changed the way they thought about animals. At one point, we were of the school of thought that if an animal is taken from the situation, or I should say rescued from the situation, that animal, in most cases, will have to be euthanized if the SPCA gains ownership of the animal. 
It's very different now. And now the animals are classified differently. The animals are all treated as individuals. It doesn't matter what type of animal cruelty it is. We treat those animals as individuals. We don't make sweeping generalizations. Uh, for, for instance, in this particular case, there were eight animals, seven dogs, and one puppy. We don't look at all of those animals and say, well, that's it. They all came from this setting, this situation. Now they're all going to be euthanized. At one time, it's very sad to say that that is the way we thought of it. But we, we've moved forward. We've advanced in our thinking when it comes to that. Do the prospects look good for these dogs in particular that some at least can be rehabbed? I can't really comment on that right now because it's still part of our investigation. Can you comment on what breed they are? They're all pit bull terriers from what I understand. Seven, seven of them are pit bull terriers and one is a uh, bull mastiff, I believe. You said it was the SPCA that received the tip? Yes. yes. Anything else? I had one. Oh, yeah. um, so this came in from a, a tipster. Yes. What are the warning signs if you suspect somebody to be doing dog fighting? What can you look out for? There are, there's activity at night. There is blood in the area. Sometimes it's gone so far as carcasses in the area. Bill, do you want to add to that? Yeah, what we'll find, we'll find dogs that were fought that are... Up to the mic. Yes, sorry. We'll find dogs that were fought that are dumped in, in fields, and we'll see that a lot. Uh, telltale signs, a lot of dogs on the property, uh, the way they're set up on heavy chains, um, hearing a lot of dogs in the basement, a lot of dogs coming and going. Uh, we do know now that there are dog fights that take, pla take place in the back of U-Hauls. When they're done with the fight, they drive down the throughway, they're done with the fight, they host the truck out there and return the it. The evidence drives away. So it, it, it's very hard to find and when we get tips from the public, and that's where we, uh, we get anything from, is it's tips from the public is how we find these things. It, most of the time, Dog fighting rings is not only dog fighting rings. They lead to other things. No, it's it's a one-stop shop. Uh, dog fighting is drug activity, um, guns, uh, Did you guys prostitution. find any other that? In, in the, no, the we search? didn't. This was, this was um, we didn't find any of that stuff there. No. Are we looking for a bigger picture, though? I mean, we got this guy. Is there camp? There's an awful lot of people involved in Buffalo in the dog fighting. Were you able to make the raid while it was going on? No. Th no, there was, there was no dog fighting taking place at that property. What was the turnout of people who might be betting on these dogs? Is there signs that these are being largely attended, uh, just very, very small and clandestine as the operation itself? That kind of information we don't have. We don't, we don't know for sure. No? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gina. Thank you very much. Thank you so Great much. Thank you.